In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a drum switch like this one to take a motor like this one and run it off 120 volts with a six lead connection and make it so I can do forward and reverse. Let's go over to my whiteboard and I'm gonna show you how that's done. Now there are two types of drum switches out there. It's pretty easy for me to figure out which one I had because the wiring diagram was on the inside of the cover to the switch. Hopefully yours is that easy, but if not, hopefully you bought it and you kind of can go figure that out. Now, if you have that other wiring diagram or that other wired switch, that's totally fine. There should be a uh, video linked in the description below sending you to a video where I teach you how to wire that one. But this video, we're gonna focus on this wiring diagram or this type of drum switch. Some things I wanna point out. You can see that forward, neutral, and reverse are all the different positions of that switch and there is some changes as it switches between those. Obviously, the neutral or off position, nothing touches. But in the forward, you can see that the connections made between the top two terminals and the middle terminals are there while they switch and they go from a lateral or a side to side to an up and down type connection. This is extremely important because no matter what motor you're working with, there's typically two wires that need to be swapped to change the polarity or the direction of travel of that, that spindle. So let's go ahead and take a look at that motor really quick and I can kind of point that out and show you what that looks like and then we'll jump back to this wiring diagram. Okay, so here is my wiring diagram on my motor. Now one thing that I wanna point out right now is if you have a motor and it's not exactly like this, that's not the end of the world because I'm trying to teach you the concept of how to wire in that drum switch. Um, the big thing that you're gonna notice with all reversing motors is there is this little line right down here that is saying from counterclockwise to clockwise, switch six and eight. So that's really all we're gonna be doing with that switch is we're gonna be switching six and eight. You can see up here, there's a bundle that's got uh, half the wires and the other half is right here. Noticing that eight is in the top bundle and six is in the bottom bundle. And there should be a line one and a line two coming in. The line one and line two should be your main wires coming from your 120 volt circuit of your house or plug or wherever you're getting this 120 volts. It doesn't matter if the black wire goes to line one or if it goes to line two or if the white wire goes to line one or to line two. They will operate exactly the same. So let's go ahead and throw this up onto the whiteboard and we'll see how that switch connects to this motor. Okay, so now we have to go ahead and we're gonna put this all together. So what I have is I have a motor right here. I've went ahead and listed all of my terminals or my wires coming off my motor here. Um, and then I have the diagram off of that motor just for reference. And then I have my switch right down here. I have put it into the forward position just so that when we get this thing all wired up, I can talk about it and show how it's switching that six and eight terminal. And then I do have my L1 and my L2, just so that way at the end, I can show you where that will plug in. So right off the bat, we know that the, the six and the eight are the ones that are going to be switched. So we need to put these on terminals that are going to be switched. Now we know that these four here in the top will be switched, but if I put them both on the top one, the one they'll get switched and it won't, they'll connect to each other. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna put one up on one corner and the other one down on the other corner or vice versa. You can do this one to this one. They just have to get switched. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take T8. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line and it's going to go ahead and connect over into here. And then I'm gonna take T6, go ahead and jump that one, go over and then down and it's gonna connect into the top of my other one over here. So that way when I switch the positions, these ones are gonna rotate and they're gonna switch, okay? So now I'm gonna take my other two and I'm gonna go ahead and we just need to connect them. So I'm gonna go like this. We're gonna go up to here. I'm gonna connect those two. We can do this with a wire nut and I will show you on an actual motor how I'm going to do this here in the future because here on my wiring diagram, I can see that I have T2 and T4 need to be connected to, to make the motor run. So then we're gonna come around here and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this thing down and it's gonna go ahead and connect into this one. Up here on the top, we're gonna to do the exact same thing. We're gonna come up and hopefully I didn't run out of room. We're gonna connect those two, come down. I'm gonna jump over all these wires, come up here and then into my top here. So now what's gonna happen is effectively 
these ones, these three are gonna get connected when you have one direction. When you go to the other direction, it's gonna actually swap that T6 and that T8. This is probably the most confusing part right here. Now, all we need to do is we need to add in our L1 and our L2 to this. First one's really easy. We can just go ahead and we can connect our L1 into the terminal right here. So one side of this is always gonna have power, if that makes sense. So like L1, this section is always gonna have power, but we need to still control the L2 because if we go ahead and we took this one and connected it into this top one up here, you never wanna connect it into the one that you have T8 or T6 in. You wanna connect it to the other ones that you've already put together. So this one can't go directly right here, otherwise you will have power on both or on all the wires except for the switching two, even in the off position. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna come up to this side. So when it is put in to either direction, this will become a closed circuit. And then we're gonna come out of this one and we're just gonna do a jumper that will go all the way up to this terminal. So this would be our jumper. So we'll jump her, okay? So this one could be just a short little wire that will jump from here over to there so that way it, could, it will get power as soon as I put it into forward or reverse. And that is the circuit. I know it looks a lot more complicated, but if you have to roll this video back and kind of watch it and put together your switch as you go, that's totally fine. But this is how I wire this switch. And it is pretty quick and after doing it a few times, you should have it down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to my motor, uh, my motor and my switch and I'm going to wire this together for you. All right, so before we get started, I want to give you guys a little lay of the land here. I went ahead and hooked up all of my grounds. We've got the main one coming in from our power source. I have also went ahead and took my L1 and L2, hooked up some connectors so that way when I go ahead and put them on my switch, they are easily installed. I also took all of my wires off of my motor here and I stripped them and got them all ready so that they could go into wire nuts really easily. And then I have all of my connecting wires all cut. I have connectors put onto one side so that it will go onto the motor and I've stripped the other side so that way I can easily wire nut them into the motor here. And I have my little jumper for moving the power up from this bottom terminal to this top terminal. So let's go ahead and get started. How I like to wire this together is I always wire my uh, two wires that will need to be flipped so that way they don't accidentally get mixed up. That would be T6 and T8. So we're gonna go ahead and here, here and start on the left side, which we're gonna be wiring our T8 to this terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my first wire, come up from the bottom, go ahead, connect it in and then just connect my T8 straight to that wire. Remember, there's, there's no other connections needed to be done there. Now we'll flip over to the other side. On this side, we're gonna hook up our T6. Remember, our T6 needs to be put onto this top terminal, so that way it can be switched. So we'll run a wire up from the bottom here, up to our top terminal. Then we'll go back over here and hook up our T6 to our, uh, that wire that we just attached to the switch. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on the left side of the switch first, and then I'm gonna move over to the right side. So on this top terminal, we are gonna hook kind of our first bundle. That first bundle is gonna be T1 and T3, but I also need to put in my jumper at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this wire in, and then I'm gonna attach my jumper in there. While I'm in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that jumper on. So that way we can finish up this side. Now with my wire that I've just attached here, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna wire nut it into my T1 and T3. So I'm gonna find my T1 and my T3. This one will have three wires inside of that wire nut. Now on my right side, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook up my next grouping here, which will be this center one. Now the center one will not only have T2 and T4 connected, it will also have line one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have my line one come in and I'm gonna put my jumper that will go over to my wire. Now I'm gonna take that jumper and I'm gonna hook up my T4 and my T2. The last thing that we need to do is we need to hook up our L2, which will go to that bottom terminal. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom here 
Now that the wiring is all done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach my face plate or my cover plate so that way nothing can accidentally get touched when I'm operating the switch. Okay, so now that everything is completely wired up, when I put my motor into the forward position, it is spinning the clockwise direction. Hopefully you can see that as it slows down. It's spinning clockwise, and when we go into the reverse, it is spinning counterclockwise. Again, hopefully you can see it as it slows down. Okay, so as a final reminder, because I really want to help you guys be able to wire whatever motor you might have, and ultimately, I had a six lead. I hope to have a nine lead here pretty quick, but it's really how this switch works. Once you understand the switch, you can take any motor, any wiring diagram, and you can actually manipulate it to get this switch to work. If we're looking at the switch here, we've got our bundle of wires coming over to this terminal, and then the other bundle of wires coming to that terminal. And then we have the two that wires that need to be switched. On mine, it happens to be a six and an eight. I, I was playing with a motor the other day that had a five and an eight on it. Same thing though. So I ha you have those ones here, and when you go and flip this switch, it's going to connect this bundle of wires over to this side, as opposed to how it is right now. So once you understand that, you're golden. But otherwise, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have anything that you'd like me to know, or maybe something that I did wrong, please leave a comment.